Hello. That's my name really big. Um, I'm Grant. I'm on the design systems team at LinkedIn. And quick show of hands. How many of you are already using AI in your design systems? A few of you. And feel free to keep those hands up. How many of you aren't yet sure what that should look like? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know that we figured it out either, but we're learning some things that we thought might be helpful to share with you all. Uh, LinkedIn is in a unique position to push into AI, both inside and outside the company. And within the company, that means exploring how AI is changing our own roles. We see a blending and blurring of traditional role boundaries that are probably going to allow people from across the company, people who don't actually have the normal like designer or engineer title, to contribute to the product building process. So what is that going to mean for design? Well, if we see product contributions across multiple disciplines with LLM assistance, it's going to create challenges at a whole new scale in the areas of quality and ensuring products feel unified across the company. These aren't necessarily new challenges but to, the, to those of us working in design systems, but the scale is, and we're going to need to address them in new ways. Another thing we've noticed is LLMs can trend towards sameness. You might be familiar with things like Shad CN, Tailwind React, technologies that LLMs are very familiar with. And if you've used any design or coding tools powered by LLMs, you'll probably notice that they tend to converge on a visual mean. Well, we really believe that the companies that handle this shift well are still going to use LLM tools, but they're also going to find ways to stand out visually while using them. They're still going to retain their own brand and their own visual language. That's going to be really important. So that leads into how, within the design systems team, we're framing what has changed in the ways we perceive our own system. We've traditionally been tasked with things like core library management, governance, engineering handoff, guidance to designers. But we now realize our scope is going to include basically any of the LLM tools that are brought into our company ecosystem, any of the tools that builders without traditional product titles are using to contribute to the product. This creates new responsibilities, for sure, but it's also creating new opportunities for design systems practitioners like ourselves. And all of this new tooling requires new approaches to design system governance. It's giving design systems an opportunity to educate and enable quality much earlier in the process than we've been involved before. We're actually able to guide teams and now also their tools through each step of the product process proactively. As a result, we've begun to think of our own system as more of a service rather than a library of components or technical information. So what does that mean? Well, if we think of the system as something that can be queried, if it's something that, given a context, am I a human or am I an LLM, what am I trying to answer from the system, then increasingly all of this data and how it's queried will act as the core of the system, supporting any of the tasks that we might ask of ourselves or LLMs as we build products. To understand why we're thinking of it this way, let's look at how we've been approaching our work with LLMs using Figma Make as an example. But actually, before we get to Make, I want to highlight something that we found very useful for us. We've put all of our docs in our core library, right alongside our components. We did this before LLMs entered the picture because it's where designers were already working, and we saw that. But we're getting additional benefits from that choice. For one thing, it fits nicely with that design systems as a service model, but it's also helped us in our early LLM explorations. And we do the same thing with our specs. They live alongside that same guidance and those components in the core library in Figma design. It means that they're always up to date, but it also means the data of our system is available and easy to extract. That could be component specs for an engineer to build off of, or it could be guidance for someone who actually isn't used to using a design system, but it could also be tokens for an LLM to consume. And that's where Make comes into the picture. We were early to get to play with it, and while we were really excited by the output, we were, of course, immediately asking ourselves, how can we apply our design system to it? 
System alignment and accuracy had already become a top request from teams evaluating LLM tools at the company. And we knew we'd need some level of system adherence to make, uh, to make, make, criti uh, to make, make successful internally. Um, and thankfully, our leadership saw the value in investing in LLM workflows for design. Internally, we've tended to view Make so far as a design tool primarily. So several of us on the team started working on Make specifically, trying to coax it onto our design system. We began by using Figma's dev mode MCP server with our color and our type libraries to pull a lot of those tokens into a global CSS file that we could use with Make. And then using MCP again, we would select portions of that guidance I showed you in Figma design and ask, L ask the LLM to extract it, ask it to put it in markdown format, even rewrite it and simplify bits of it to help create a guidelines file for Make. And this gave us a really great starting point for experimentation. From there, we did a bunch of iterating. And we found that a good approach for us was to limit the guidelines to our top 15 or so components, including some, include some general layout guidelines and also some rules for working that the LLM can follow, basically helping it understand what assets are available to it and how would we like it to work for us. But getting consistent results still took a lot of knowledge and setup for a given prompt. There was a lot of context setting you'd have to do in your prompt or in your initial make before you could actually get to the part where you could ask make to work on the thing you actually wanted it to build for you. And because we were already using Figma design in our workflows, we knew make would be heavily tested by teams at LinkedIn. So within design systems, we started asking ourselves, what could we do to lower the barrier to entry? We focused on pre-baking a make with special instructions. We used context prompting to ensure that you could copy that make as a template, add your own prompt after our work, and starting from there, get fairly consistent results. This work became the base template that we distribute to teams. And because we were using color tokens from our own system, we could add useful UI features to our templates, like this dark mode switcher. Designers don't even have to remember to ask for this when they're using the template. It just is baked in. We even created a template that would always generate three divergent design ideas from an initial prompt. Give it a prompt, it'll give you three versions of an idea of that prompt. Everything we built up to that point was really great for exploring net new work. But we're also investing in starting point templates for popular areas of our products. Designers are busy, and it's really helpful for them to be able to jump into their particular part of a product and iterate and make without having to build everything from scratch to start. But also, as a systems team, more importantly to us, we're teaching those teams how to take our work and build off of it, which is what you see here. This way, they're not fully reliant on us for everything. Uh, switching gears, LinkedIn has always respected member privacy. And to support that, over the years, we've created a library of mock content, fake people, companies, and more, so that designers are not tempted to just copy and paste from their feed and put it right into their Figma file. And a long time ago, we built a plugin to enable the designers in Figma design to easily apply that content. We call it Realish, and this is what it looks like. We found that the availability of the same people and entities across all product teams has actually really helped unify storytelling. And again, it fits nicely into that new service model, even though it's something that we've been doing for a while. So naturally, we wanted to make that same possibility, or wanted to make that same possibility in Make. We extracted our top mock entities, our image URLs, a few other bits of content, and baked it all into those template context, context prompts, instructing the LLM on how to use the content. And now designers have access to their familiar mock content from Figma design as they work and make. They can even request specific people or companies by name to kind of help uh, move from their design into their make. We've also made this content available within the company, formatted for teams to use in other LLM tools they might be working with. In addition to design exploration, prototyping is an area where Make has already been really useful for us. There are simply some things that are easier to communicate 
when someone can directly use them. This panel prototype was created by another design engineer on our team to help communicate some ideas to our engineering partners. And one thing designers don't often realize is they kind of have a special skill. They could take something generic and in their mind snap the design system to it and understand what's being communicated. But most people who aren't designers really have trouble getting past those rough edges. They find them distracting. So all of this work in offering a way and make to prototype on system has really increased our ability to communicate ideas with fidelity. And while it can be a time saver for designers as compared to other ways of prototyping, it's really for non-designers that Make has unlocked an entirely new way of exploring and communicating ideas in the company. This prototype was created by our UXR team to test out some new search ideas. So in all of this work, what are we learning about the ways our design systems roles are shifting? We still need to set and maintain quality for the system. But now that work is spread across multiple tools, both known and even unknown. We don't always know when someone pulls a new tool into the company. We'll always enable on-system exploration and iteration, but it's more critical now, as it helps keep stakeholders from being distracted by off-system design. And it makes it easier to see the value in these new rapid explorations that LLMs have enabled for us. And of course, we need to enable collaboration, something that's already been core to our mission, but now we view it through a company-wide lens across multiple disciplines. So yeah, none of this is entirely new, but it's more critical given the broader contributions our products are receiving from across the company. At its core, design systems used to focus really on two groups, designers and engineers. But now we need to support broader functional backgrounds. It's more work, but the benefit of this approach is we're helping teams learn to speak each other's functional languages, collaborate more effectively, and do it all much earlier in the process than design systems has been involved before. And getting back to that idea of the system providing the core support for our tooling, we're working toward making that support as technology agnostic as possible. The system data needs to be available to whatever group across the company needs to query it using whatever tool they want to use and provide an on-system answer for their context. So it's more important than ever that we maintain clean sources of truth of our system assets in order to keep each step of this new product development process aligned and consistent. And finally, expect it all to change. We know at LinkedIn we've been early in figuring out ways to apply LLMs to our design system, and we're no, we know we don't even have it all figured out. We've barely scratched the surface here with Make and other work we're doing in this area. But that's why it's a really exciting time to be working with design systems. We help provide the guardrails for LLMs to work within, while enabling people across the company to help contribute to the product building process, sometimes for the first time. Thank you. The work you've seen on the screen goes far beyond me. We have an incredible design systems team at LinkedIn and many teams beyond that can, that contribute to this work. Thanks in particular to Giuliano, Teresa, Sharon, and Ray for their help on this presentation. And if any of this looks interesting to you, we are hiring. Find me on LinkedIn, I'll tell you more.